The internet is as convenient, exciting, and lucrative as it is dangerous and dark. The web has evolved through the years, and so too have the criminals that are out to harm others. Steve Ranger has produced several cover stories for us on cyber crime and cyber warfare. Steve, thanks for being with us here. Sure, no problem. All right, to start off uh, with here, talk about the world of online crime. How has it evolved in general? Okay, so what's happened is over the 30 or so years that we've had the web, just like uh, the rest of us have learned to enjoy the, the web for various reasons, uh, criminals have learned to enjoy it and exploit it to make money, to break things. Uh, some of them even want to change the world. So we have all these different criminal groups out there from uh, hacktivists to uh, lone wolves who just want to break things right through to uh, organized crime and even increasingly at the moment, uh, state-sponsored hackers who are going out and uh, systematically breaking things. So across the internet, we have this, this huge kind of uh, network of different crimes and different criminals. Uh, sometimes they work together, sometimes work on uh, completely apart. But yeah, what we've got is an, is an evolving world with, uh, with lots of different uh, criminal groups, uh, criminal individuals uh, looking for ways to make money or just cause trouble, really. And, and very scary, uh, obviously. So, Steve, when you talk about the groups, uh, the organized crime, some of them working together, as you mentioned, you've got lone wolves as well uh, as, as, as large groups, everyone playing their own particular role. Talk a little bit about how they interact, how they go about their business. Sure. So what's quite interesting is there's this, this kind of overlapping ecosystem. You have uh, right at the bottom, you have what we call disorganized crime, disorganized cyber criminals, which might be uh, individuals or groups of one or two or three, so, you know, small groups, and they might be doing anything really from uh, fraud to uh, hacking, to writing viruses, to writing ransomware, or to buying ransomware from uh, larger organized groups or maybe someone on the dark web, and then reselling it or just trying to make a, a bit of money here and there doing scams. Then you have organized crime and organized crime uh, on the internet now is, is a seriously big business. You have uh, uh, these kind of uh, federated organizations where you'll have uh, a kind of a cyber crime boss and then you'll have that he, will, he or she will connect up different groups with different specialities to run, run really big frauds, make a bunch of money. Then above them, you might have uh, state backed uh, hackers. Uh, we've seen a lot of that recently. Uh, involved with uh, cyber espionage or probing military systems, uh, looking for looking for holes that could be exploited at a different date. Uh, what's interesting is all these different groups overlap. So uh, the dis this disorganized criminals will feed into organized crime, organized crime and some of the state backed stuff. They will also overlap as well. So you might have someone who is, um, you know, by, by day working, uh, working uh, as a criminal and by night working uh, doing some kind of state backed stuff all the other way around. So all, all these groups, it's really hard to work out who's where, um, but there's certainly a lot of overlapping uh, organized, organized crime and disorganized crime, uh, lots, lots of overlapping activity there. Okay, and when you mentioned, you talk so much about how we are hearing so much about the state uh, backed groups and the criminals there, how big of a threat is that? So I think it's hard to calculate the threat. To the average person, it's pretty unlikely that uh, state-backed hackers are going to come after you unless you're a really high-value target. So to the average person, it's quite a rare kind of risk. Uh, obviously, if you are um, working in aerospace or biotech or robotics, one of those kind of companies, then there's a reasonable chance that uh, someone's going to try and hack your systems to steal your intellectual property or just cause trouble. Uh, in, in terms of the, the bigger risks, uh, clearly down the line, there's a lot of worry about cyber warfare. Uh, that uh, that uh, hackers could actually uh, break into things like power systems or banks and uh, and cause chaos that way. That's clearly a huge risk, but the likelihood of it is very low. What's going to happen day to day is you're more likely to run into a scammer or maybe get uh, ransomware on your PC or something like that. Those, those are the kind of the everyday risks, which are incredibly annoying and a real problem if suddenly uh, your PC is encrypted and you can't get to your family photos or your, your the work you're doing. Those are kind of everyday risks. There's a, Right at the other end of the scale is this kind of this fear of um, cyber warfare and and and, and uh, state-sponsored crime. That, yeah, that's that's much less likely, but clearly, you know, really, really dangerous if it actually does happen. Right, on both ends of the scale, uh, scary for everyone. And when it comes to uh, protecting ourselves, Steve, what is it that you recommend? Well, you know, uh, some of the real basics can save you here. Uh, if you make yourself a, a slightly more difficult target to to go after, chances are the the, the kind of the small fry will will go somewhere else. So that means. 
making sure that you don't have default passwords, making sure that you do all your updates, making sure that if you can use it, then you do have two-factor authentication. All, all those kind of really obvious things. Being careful about what you click on in an email. From, from the most basic to the most incredibly complicated uh, attacks, nearly all of them start with a phishing email where someone will send you an email that you think is from a coworker or a friend or, you, or it says you've won the lottery or you've won a prize. You click on that and you could be in a lot of trouble. So basically, the common sense approach is going to save you from a whole lot of pain. Um, at the other end of the scale, uh, if you are being targeted by uh, state-sponsored hackers, well, you, you've got to work a lot harder. You've got to, you kind of almost expect that they will in some way get into your systems and then try and work out how to reduce the damage. Um, again, that's, that's really only for a very small sector of people. And those, probably, those people probably realize who they are already. But for the, the average person who, who isn't like a, necessarily a target for, um, for an intelligence agency, just doing the obvious stuff will make you so much of a harder target to go after that mostly they will go elsewhere. All right, and Steve, you know, as, as I mentioned there at the beginning, of course, uh, the web has opened up uh, just such a whole new world to all of us, really, and it, it is so exciting and so lucrative in so many ways and connects people together, you know, from all over the world. But uh, it's evolving, but the criminals are evolving, too, and that's, I guess, the thing we all need to kind of stay on our toes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's loads of amazing stuff on the web. You shouldn't be scared of using it, but you should use some sort of uh, basic common sense you know, basic security hygiene to keep yourself safe. All right, most definitely. Steve, uh, thank you so much for your work on this. I know you've done so much research and several cover stories for us here at Tech Republic and ZDNet. So we appreciate your work and be sure to check out uh, Steve's pieces there at Tech Republic and ZDNet.